my legacy. I'm Blue UK Jazz Dance of Blue UK Jazz Dance. And I'm the number one educator in the history of the UK. I'm going to talk about when I present education, I do it presenting equality, diversity, inclusion, social health, fairness, well being. I'm going to talk about what's happened on the UK jazz dance scene for a very long time. What's been presented to people has not been dance education from no dancer to date. I tell you this in this room. What's been presented has been a commercial education where dancers have not given you the information on dancers. There's been a lack of diversity, lack of inclusion, lack of fairness, lack of social health. Dancers have come from a commercial perspective who've been teaching who are excluding other dancers that other individuals should know about for their education. So, for example, from the north of England, many dancers like myself are unknown and unsung in very a lot of educational institutions in the south. There's a reason. Because of the commercial interest, people are keeping our names out. We're just hitting education now, really. It's been commercially focused, so I come from a perspective of identify dance education versus commercial education. Now I'm an individual in both commercial dance education of UK Jazz Dance and dance education of UK Jazz Dance. You get me? All right. Dance education is created to enable anybody who engages in dance education to build positive character development, build the confidence, emotional intelligence, build leadership skills, build management skills. You engage in the activity for personal development to improve your life, to release and realize your full potential through dance education. Now, my dance education is unique to anybody else's because from the beginning, my work was about enabling people to be learn happiness for UK Jazz Dance learn to use it as a natural health and healing well-being have you got that from the beginning and it was important like i said to bring equality which i always talked about women who have been involved in uk jazz dance from the beginning i talk about all the major companies i don't just talk about blue uk jazz dance if i'm working with dancers i want to give them a broad spectrum of uk jazz dancing i'm the one of the dancers who does his own unique styles of the many styles that are out there. I'm the most versatile dancer in the history of UK jazz dance. And I've documented it from 2009. I've documented that fact in 2015. Just in that period of time, during the key time I've been ill and as identified, I use UK jazz dance to identify it can be used as a natural health and healing tool, happiness tool, you know what I'm saying? It can be used for generic leadership development, management development. That's what my dance education does. So let me talk about one of my legacies is me bringing outstanding knowledge about UK Jazz Dancers, one that hasn't been presented before. Now, one of the things I shuddered about that is important for me to talk about, um, I'm the first dancer to do a review on the definitive book wrote by Snowboy Cogrove. He's a DJ, he's a producer, he's a writer, boom, boom, boom. I shuddered because what happened has been he comes from a commercial focus environment. The book has been written from a very Eurocentric way. The book has strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. This book is not an educational book. I tell you this because there's no analysis in that book. It's a book which is Eurocentric, Eurocentric written. It's a book that has a lack of diversity, a lack of inclusion, a lack of social health, a lack of fairness because it's written from a biased perspective. He identifies the North South. If there's scenes going on North, South, East and West cultures, lifestyles, active lifestyles to do with UK jazz dance, you need a balanced perspective of it. And he never gave a balanced perspective because he's still in the industry, the commercial industries, which is about to go through a new beginning, through a revival. And what he has done is made sure he's put the North, less than the North, his legacy of achievement, benefits, contribution, development, and made sure he's pushed the South. 
so everybody who around the world keeps themselves home commercially in the south of England he's done a disservice I say it as an individual who went to work alongside him I told you the book has strengthened me the threats but he's done a disservice to the dancers my work is to identify the imbalance people need to know there's been racism on this scene in that book Snowboy's book racism is reflected and he shows the racism that they, the DJs had. He shows cultural assimilation occasion. He shows cultural bias and implicit bias. For 40 years I've been on this UK jazz dance scene and I'm still facing the same racist stereotypes from the beginning of 1975 and before I was born the same racist stereotypes about black males are perpetuated through Snowboy's book. That's why I should in education. You need an individual who knows the culture. The culture heritage is not broken down for individuals. So I'm going to give you an example. In the book, individuals talk about sparring. People talk about dancing in a circle. And the way it's written is to make people fearful of going in the circle. They've not identified our culture. Any culture in the world where African diaspora has been, they've created a competition. Now, United States straight away, if we look at hip hop, hip hop has circles. It came after UK jazz dance. So let me just present to you on hip hop. When you talk about hip hop, how do you pe how do people identify it? It came as an alternative activity and development to what? to stop gang violence to engage young people in positively using their creative talents in an art form that had competition so the circles a lot of battles take place so they call them battles UK jazz dance was the same but you haven't got the same analytical thinking about it exactly the same the dancers sparred against each other and sometimes that sparring ended up in fights but not on the extreme which people have presented it to you because what's happened has been the number one DJs the number of proprietors the number of writers have never showed you a video of the club scene so you from an outside say you're a parent you are looking at this art form. You think, oh my God, it's about fighting. This. Why would you send your child to be involved in an art form if, boom, what they do is just fight and they're vicious? No. It was young people coming together. So understand what I talk about here today. Because I'm talking from a dancer educator's point of view. From a parent. I'm a parent. Not only a dancer. I'm the longest dancer in the history of UK jazz dance in Manchester. I know about being circles parents. And what has been presented to you has been wrong. Same as hip hop, it directs us to use our art form positively. And that time we didn't have gangs. But what gangs we had was a gang of sportsmen, a gang of sound system members, a gang of steel pan players, a gang of musicians. What had happened to African diaspora youth, all parents, be of all nationalities, understand. We had faced defranchisement. We had faced isolation against all that racism at the highest level from 1975 with the National Front. Against that, we as young people show discipline, desire, devotion and determination to create a new jazz age. This new jazz age, we created a new active lifestyle, a new dance development, a new lifestyle that's never been presented before. And I'm still around 40 years later from 10 years old to 51 still doing that art form. And I've come to share with you the legacy of our achievements, benefits, contributions, development. It shaped me to have a positive experience which is not presented a positive character and personality. And it relates heritagely to my rites of passage. All these things have not been presented to you because Snowboy, Cogrove, Mark Cogrow's book, The Definitive Book, he's not a dancer. 
99% of all the individuals have written on this are not dancers and not from the heritage from which who from the heritage of the individuals who innovated it who evolved it who went through the complexities snowboy doesn't live in the heart of the black community he's not from the heart of the black, the black community of dancers he knows nothing about this art form i tell you that because from what is written if he had any nows he would have identified someone like myself i went to helping people to support him in 2000, from 2009 after reading about the book I went to him and said let me bring the culture heritage because what you've done is perpetuate fear any parent with their own mind if you read about UK jazz dance listening to the interviews of only competition about the dancers you would never let your child be involved in UK jazz dancing and how I make a comparison is like boxing. A lot of parents were, were afraid to let their children box. Remember, the girls wouldn't do no boxing. The boys wouldn't do no boxing. Now we've got boxer size. Why? Because we've gone through a journey where individuals identified boxing among boxers is two conditioned people fighting against each other. Yes, there's been deaths. But what is that percentage of death? Probably 1% of all the fighters that have fought, fought have been involved in, have died from death. Do you understand? So when people start to re really put, put it together, that's true. Because how it's been made out is this aggressive, vicious boxing. I do boxing. So I can tell you, for example, all my friends are involved in boxing. Do boxing teaches you discipline. Boxing teaches you how to care for yourself. Boxing teaches you to maintain your health and your well-being. That's what boxing was created for. And more importantly, I'll talk about boxing from a spiritual perspective. That's how it was created, people. You don't know the history of boxing. Boxing never just jumped up in Britain. Boxing come from the African continent. You know what I'm saying? Thailand, they did their own boxing. It was done for spiritual purposes. It was to maintain the health, the spirit, mind and body of individuals. And all we have to do is connect it to martial arts. Because when we connect martial arts, we don't think two people sparring in a ring, taekwondo, karate, jikwondo. When you think about martial arts, what do you think when two people get in a circle? You don't think about vicious, violent people, do you? Just people have used it that way, but that's not what the percentage of people do with it. Well, that's the same with UK jazz dance people. I'm the first individual really going to talk heavily on the circle. Because what's been presented in Snowboy's book, as identified, has been a Eurocentric point of view and a commercial point of view. Because he needs to put the North out of people's minds and put the South. And I'm the first individual going to tell you about the differences between the North and the South. Yeah? And the Midlands. London has the biggest population of Blacks in Britain. A warrior culture exists. Black females, black males danced. Their culture is a warrior culture. In the past, they had a rites of passage through dance people. And they used the circle heavily. They, When you look at the video footage that they're presenting today, you see black youth among themselves engaging in a positive activity and development to direct their creative energy. That's what you see. What has been presented has been we engaged in our youthful time, in our youth arts in a negative way. And that is not acceptable to me as a dance educator and as a commercial educator. I present it totally different because I'm bringing the cultural heritage. How, what do, how do white males bond with each other and bond with their females? How do the Asians involve themselves, males and females? There's a way, isn't there? Right, okay. Which has been accepted. Unfortunately, what we have is cultural bias and implicit bias against UK jazz dancers from the beginning. Before I was born, my father's Jamaican. Before I was born in 1964, the same stereotypes about Jamaicans still exist then as in 2015 through Snowboy's book. What was being presented to the world about Jamaicans? And why was it presented? 
Historically, simply, 30% of British wealth had come from Jamaica. The most revolts in Jamaica against, the most revolts in slavery, against slavery, come from Jamaica. That is when the stereotype of the Jamaicans caused trouble came about. Was the slave owners talking about slaves getting up, standing up for their rights to break slavery, one of the most oppressive situations in the history of time. Particularly in Jamaica, what was done there was evilness. And when people study, I'm talking about all cultures, know what was done to the Jamaicans. 30% of their wealth, which came from sugar. Just to have two lumps, three lumps of sugar. Jamaica, 30% of British wealth. Remember, Britain owned one sixth of the world. 30%. 30%, 30% of its wealth came from Jamaica alone. You have to go and study the history. I studied it because my father's Jamaican. It's important I do so. My mom's Grenadian. No one knows about Grenadian culture. African diaspora women are written off the planet completely. They don't have a history. They have nothing, they have nothing to do with contributing to anything the black male does. There's a reason, because people like to read about African diaspora males and the negatives that they bring on the earth. They never like to write anything positive. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Right. Because it doesn't make money. Historically, anything to do with black males, anything that is of ill repute or presented as ill repute, yeah, as what happened originally when hip-hop first came, any black dance... Any African diaspora dance in the US that ever came was always dismissed by the middle classes and by the upper classes historically and even by some of their own people who never understood it because they faced cultural assimilation and education. So you'll hear me speak on cultural assimilation and education was created by the British 1890 to 1990. Basically, still was continuing even today. Basically, cultural assimilation cultural <laughs> Assimilation education is education that miseducated a people to believe that Western society is dominant and your own culture is not dominant, it's inferior, it's uncivilized. So many Indians, American Indians, went through a cultural assimilation education, got their hair cut, were told by the, the church, particularly has been the base, basically the major converter the major perpetuator, because a lot of missionary schools, the major education of cultural assimilation, cultural assimilation education came from missionaries. And they went all over the world miseducating people about themselves. They told them, your culture is uncivilized and British culture is civilized. And they did it to miseducate them. My parents went for a colonial education. They got miseducated. I tell you that. I listened to my parents. But what they did, they started to engage themselves in a re-education. And the United States is one of the forerunners. U.S. Caribbean is one of the forerunners of re-education. Because remember, they have their own universities. We don't have our own universities in Britain. Like the Americans do. Because African Americans are writing on their heritage dances. We don't have that in Britain. To that scale. I'm the first individual... Who talks about UK jazz dance from a culture heritage perspective. The first one to bring research to show that, guess what? Capoeira was in, was in the Caribbean. We were warriors. And what has been presented by Snowboy has been, unfortunately, distorting information. And, unfortunately, because of his power as a leading DJ, a, a percussionist that travels the world year in, year out, decade, decade, in, decade, out. He's seen the authoritative leader and he's presenting that book in Japan and all around the world with launches. The book is a book of distortion. You have to know that culture inside out. He's written it and I must give respect to a person who up and wrote the book. But he doesn't have culture heritage and that's my work. I come back here today identifying. When you look at hip hop, you identify hip hop. History is basically it was brought. As an alternative to gangs. That's what African Bombarda did. What was UK jazz dance? What was the history came before hip hop? 
basically what happened is it's a natural health and healing dance just the same as hip hop and we use sparring in it just like boxing we have competition what do we use competition for competition used for many many reasons yeah was to push the boundaries of your art form we use competition as enable us to have a voice among ourselves because you had competitions in your city you had competitions city to city you get what I'm saying right it was important to have a voice why because you didn't have a voice <coughs> excuse me we didn't have a voice and what happens is I've been in the circle for many many years I've never had a fight ever in the history of time and I've been in many battles and the same with not martial artists they can tell you many boxers have been sparring in sparring in the ring you have to learn the discipline of sparring that's why I like to use boxing as a good example or Thai boxing as a good example because they have they have the same conditions you go out as a as a boxer you spar in practice and in boxing there is also you can just do boxing for health and well-being and there's boxing for competition so I talk about people I did UK Jazz Dance as a tool for my health and well-being my personal development do you hear what I'm saying and it's my personal development because I came a freestyle dancer do you hear what I'm saying and to push myself to test myself I sparred to push myself I went to competitions where was that competition laid out for us for ourselves that we developed it because the DJs did not invest in major competitions for us like Lindy Hop in America and Charleston people invested in it so it created opportunities career opportunities here people didn't want people to have career opportunities because the DJs tried to kill it from day one they never understood the culture they identified the culture the circle what's been identified in the culture as the culture culture let me repeat again what's been identified over and over again by Anglo-Saxon DJs Anglo-Saxon uh, onlookers has been the circle killed the club culture that's what been identified now if you're a parent listening to that you think it's just pure gang violence people just fighting it's not that parents I say to tell you this straight away it's kids young people growing up we were young when we started what you have was we had codes. Snowboy puts it in there, but we had codes from the beginning. Who created the codes? Not the DJs created the code. The dancers created the code. The dancers were drawing a martial arts. I'm going to tell you this now, very simply. The competition element came from steppers, reggae. We had steppers. You had a lot of competitive dancers in the Caribbean. We have the most com competitive dancers on the planet. African Americans, African Caribbeans people forgotten and we came with a competitive nature to Britain our parents came with it we continued it limbo carnival calypso you have soul dancing funk dancing these are all dances that we had competition and to to watch it you create a circle and when you look at UK jazz dances you find that we carried that unfortunately and positively we see retentions of the slavery experience that's right the way we're in circles the way we dance you see them dancing and using dance to hide their martial arts because that's what we did dance changed in the Caribbean had to because the master didn't want us to allow us to dance in our own way so people had to disguise and that we already had dances that disguised martial arts movement which is capoeira but it more became more <clears throat> of an activity to disguise the martial arts because the drum was banned any showing of your african background was banned because people wanted to break our spirits break our experience but the circle has always been there and now you see the circle in japan so i'm going to show educators in japan and korea and show you how they've got a prosperous youth educational program and we don't have that in the north of England where key dancers came from in the beginning but because no investment 
because of the labeling, because of the stigmatization, education won't take it on. It's only a people like myself who brought it into education. This dance would be dead in the north, the whole of it. Beside myself in Manchester, no one teaches. No one teaches from a culture heritage perspective. Nobody. I tell you this now. And the whole north of England, all over England, no one's teaching from a culture heritage perspective. Because they engaged in UK jazz first. Many of the dancers went towards commercial development. And commercial development was never promoting UK jazz from a positive element. It promoted the trend. I was in both. But my perspective come from a culture heritage perspective. I was managing myself. And I created a mission statement for the development myself. Be it, be it in education, be it in the commercial industries. Simply to promote a positive image and energy of my African culture, heritage, arts and wider use, particularly urban. Be, be I in education, be I in the uh, heart of community development, be it within the commercial. I'm developing a commercial show right now. I've already done it. Yeah, a tribute to John Bubbles is going to change into the name Rebirth of the Cool Volume 1, dedicated 110% to my legacy. Basically, me sharing with people my achievements, benefits, contributions and developments through UK Jazz Dance. And part of that being in the circle that has to be spoken about because in the definitive book it has a whole host of people talk about the circle and they're talking from a perspective of lay people who don't understand dance and that's been the problem with the, the my problem with Snowboy's book the challenge with Snowboy's book and that's why I went to help him because what happened he, he wrote some the information <coughs> he's wrote no one ever never heard of. UK jazz dance is gonna come into education. But what is come from a perspective now, racist offensive knowledge has now come back into the educational system again when we're supposed to live in a time of culture diversity. He does not reflect culture diversity in his book. He doesn't reflect diversity in his book. My work, I commit myself to diversity, professionalism, innovation. And one of the ways I'm bringing innovation is through the talks I'm doing now, real talk. I'm the first individual dancer who's got up and talked from an authoritative point of view because I have qualifications in dance. I'm an individual who has qualifications in arts and community. I have qualifications in research and sonorities in marketing. So I'm the first individual to identify how the dancers were exploited by the DJs from the beginning and still are being exploited today. What Snowboy does, unfortunately I'm going to tell him, he doesn't like, won't like to hear it, but it's a perspective. You've exploited us again. Because what you presented is a wrong for story in context of North-South. Because of the North-South divide. He needs to put the, the South in a dominant position in the world. He does that by identifying himself the most things that happen in UK Jazz Dance happened in the south that is a total impossibility listen to the words i say here today the catalyst place for the development and evolution of uk jazz dance all styles took place in the north of england through our all-nighters and <coughs> for our all-nighters and all-dayers all the dancers never converged in london so how how would it how would we ever seen that evolved we made even better our dances Life styles and cultures come together. It never happened in London. You need to know the number one styles in the world come from the north of England. <coughs> you need to know that. You don't know that because the book is made from a commercial perspective. You don't know. Blues and jazz, they come from the south north. Blue UK jazz dance comes from the north. The number one dancer of all competitions. Now taking place historically, he's from the north of England during the time. All round dance of all dancers who are not all competitions has been from he's from the north of England. What does he have? He shows versatility. He's doing a cross race. The cross race cross. He's doing. All styles, he mixes different styles together from the north south, the fusion and the 
soul jazz, Latin jazz styles that were evolved. Well, you saw that. You saw that in the north of England. You saw that less in London. The history of Manchester in general, you have to know its history to do with jazz. So the story, what I'm bringing today, I told you as individuals, is I'm a dance educator. A dance educator is inclusive. A dance educator reflects cultural diversity. A dance educator reflects fairness. A dance educator knows that my work is to empower dancers, any dancer, to release and realize their full potential through my short or long time engagement with them. It's about developing them to have positive characters and personalities. And one of my personal positive characters and personality traits is that I'm an inclusive person. I make sure you know if there's dancers in London who have done, contributed to UK jazz dance, then I'll let you know about it. What's happened from the South because of the commercial focus, which there is, I tell you, as individuals come back, who's being blocked. One of the key things, amazing, I can tell you from first hand recently what has been my reception from 2009 to 2015 about me coming into the commercial industries again. A lot of underhanded things have taken place. And what happens is now there's oligarchies going from north to the south. Number one DJ, number one promoter and photographers all have abused me, spoken to me in a derogatory way, treated me in a derogatory way. And I speak about it. Why? Because I initiate a project. A photography project and a video project. People wanted to rip me off and did rip me off and had to get up and stand up against them individuals then created went and spread negatives about me so people came to accost me in the street and I had to deal with some people in the street you know why because people needed to destroy my reputation so they could do anything they wanted that's unacceptable to me People didn't know I was coming back talking about dance education. People didn't know I was coming back talking about dance education versus commercial. Talking about the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Because the, the commercial development, a lot of dancers forged that for themselves. And that is a positive. But what happened was they didn't have an infrastructure for themselves. Like We didn't have Dance UK. It was not an infrastructure for us. Black organisations, Black Dance Development Trust... Unfortunately, their interest was only at the time when they came in 85 to 89. They were bringing all the African dance groups together. They weren't very much interested in commercial African diaspora dancing or the new developments that were happening, new social dances. That wasn't their interest. My interest was from the beginning, I created my own infrastructure. Secondly, I was the first person to start to look at what is the connection between the traditional what Black Dance Development Trust is teaching and the evolution of the new social dances our parents had brought and then we evolved from them. What was the connection? I was the first dancer to do that. And I'm still continuing that. So what's happened? The internet has been brilliant. Because it, the internet opened up me to come back in a bigger, bolder, better way as a dance educator. Really focusing on dance appreciation and rethinking. So my two areas that I'm focusing on is just pure rethinking. And it opened up a door for me to develop the ideas I wanted to develop in jazz. So for example, I've gone to back to physical comedy. Which is an area I engaged in from a long time ago. But now I can present it to the world. I can show people my work in progress before I was doing an event but you wouldn't see it. Now I can present to individuals, I use the cane from a baby, I've been using a cane. I saw John Bubbles and I had a hanger, pretending it was a cane. And that's where John Bubbles, John, a tribute to John Bubbles story came about. So I show you, which has not been identified, I show you the seven Ds, the determination, desire, the lifestyle of a professional 
who wasn't a professional first. It was, I was involved in UK Jazz Dance as an active lifestyle from 10 years old. It was something I did for fun. I loved dance. And this dance brought me out. You cannot be involved in UK Jazz Dancing. I was a very shy child. I was a very, very awkward child. I was a very, very insular child. But what I had from the beginning was I'd very... My parents had taught me to engage in positive activities and hobbies. So some people were under stress. I probably had chronic emotional stress from a baby people due to undiagnosed dyslexia. And then what happened was when I went to primary school, I was violently bullied between six to eight that my parents had to send to Kang Parabian. So I had stress and it led to chronic emotional stress. How I dealt with it intuitively, I didn't know at that time. I started to engage in dancing. I used dance as my escapism and sports. Those are only two ways... I could really release the energy, the stress I was going through. But you didn't know at the time, you just do it automatically. And what happened was, through my dedication, my hard work ethics, as a child who was clumsy, determined that I didn't want to be clumsy no more, I came, by the time I was eight years old, I became a protégé sportsman and a protégé dancer in my school. Not only that, I became chess champion. By the time I left my school, I had broken many, many records to do with sports, dance, chess. Cause I went into the school as an individual, as IQ, as an individual, and I have intelligence. But I showed I had intelligence because, first of all, I became chess champion. Now, the joke was I was suffering in my educational work. I label educational needs. I could hardly read people, I could hardly write. Yeah, and it was worsened by IQ test. The IQ test makes doesn't want, makes you not want for you, don't makes you not want to engage in education in the way that you would like to. Because what happened is, I'd, when you have teachers that write you off, that doesn't help you. That doesn't encourage you to be involved. Then when you have speech impediment and people laugh at you, I used to say brew instead of blue. People used to laugh at you just physically. People laughed at me anyway because I had dark skin. I get name called all the time, people. Throughout my life at um, primary school from 6 to 8 was horrendous in the first two years. I got tortured. That scarred me for life. I tell people, you know, you cannot understand what it's like to be a dark-skinned child in an all-white school. You don't know the scars. Socially, physically, in it, socially, physically, intellectually, emotionally, culturally, spiritually. I thought I was inept. What was presented about blacks, I believe I reflected it. The dumb, brawn, no brains. And our teachers used to say that to me. Priest, you got brawn, you're brawn, no brains. But it's luckily, I've always had people that looked out for me. My headmaster looked out for me. He saw I had talent. At eight years old, when I started to compete, I had the maturity of an adult. And I, I got taught to play competition from my parents. They showed me to play sports with maturity. They coached me. My headmaster was very impressed by that. And he was like really shocked. I can't understand how you got lack of, lack of maturity in education development. But you show maturity in your dance dance education development and you dance uh, sports education development and sports is huge in Catholic schools and throughout the whole of the UK because remember that's where we spar so think about I'm telling you you play competition is very important what happens when your child plays comp plays sports you do it for fun first then you get teams I come in and I'm the best sportsman in the history of the school ever in all age groups they have to have me playing for them in all age groups and through me, they win awards never won before, particularly in cricket. I break all records in Manchester. Full stop. I break records. Never. I was playing for all the years in cricket. Never seen no player like me ever in the history of time. Athlete, very small, the fastest. Athlete, never seen anything like me. Do you get what I'm saying? Very, very important. I transferred that knowledge, that discipline, to UK Jazz Dance. It's one of the most Olympian activities your child can do. And it will teach you about character, positive things. 
Yeah, it'll teach you about personality. It'll teach you how to improve your personality and character. It'll improve your leadership skills. It'll improve your self-management skills. It'll improve you as a person to be able to cope with negatives. Best way to describe it, people go to the web and identify what it takes to become a professional dancer. Don't judge a book by its cover. Go and look at what it takes to become a professional dancer. When you look at what it takes, you'll see they're the characteristics to survive and thrive in the 21st century and in past centuries. Basically, the key learning for a child, socially, physically, intellectually, culturally, emotionally, spiritually, if you're most spiritually inclined, but in philosophy, you give your children philosophy. UK jazz dancers develop this. I'm one of them. I can stand up here today anywhere in the world and I can speak. But not only that, I can teach people, thousands of people, about UK jazz dance, talk about the wider cultural arts activities I involved, where I got the confidence, where I built the confidence to do what I'm doing today. Because what happens is confidence enables your child to believe that they're capable of anything. And where that confidence first came from originally was through sports because I taught myself 90% of what I knew. My parents taught me to love sport and I'd go out and train. I created my own drills. And what it was is a beautiful story because what happened, you remember, how did I learn to do drills? I saw it on TV. I was in the school. So I imagine I've got football in my life, cricket in my life. And what happens is I'm getting a dance educate. I've got a education around cricket in my own home, an education in the heart of my community and other homes. Because we're the friends, we play cricket in the home, catching a ball in the backyard inside the house. Yeah, we used to have a called what do we call it now? Well, oh, come back to me. We used to have a catching game. We used to do drills. I used to do them in the house. Butterfingers. That's right. Butterfingers. We used to play. Because catching the ball was a necessity. If you want to become a cricket player, if you want to come around as player, girls are involved in sports. But rounders was a big game. So ball games were done. Why? Because they improved your eye and hand coordination. Have you got that? Right, okay. Very much important. People understood about education, about eye and hand coordination, improved cognition. And that's how my I never understood how I improved quickly in developing an educational understanding was through ball sports. And when I stopped doing ball sports was the first time I got major disorientations of person with dyslexia. So what happened? I realized doing sports people, your child has to be involved in sports. Don't leave them at the computer and they need to be involved, particularly in ball sports. Do you understand what I'm telling you? And one thing about ball sports, what's the beautiful thing about it? Ball sports engages them in collaborating with people, working alongside people. So when you talk about working with others, what way have I done that? I've done it in so many different ways, particularly through ball sports. But working with others has been through coaches because I came a sports prodigy and I've been in sports excellence. Lancashire Cricket School. I was involved in it. I went there. Flixton boys, Flixton men, I was involved in that. See what I'm saying? Sell Harriers. I used to run for Sell Harriers from 11 to 16. And I had to take myself there, religiously, people. On a Wednesday, I used to go to Stretford. And on a Sunday, I used to have to go Sell Harriers. I took myself there and back. See what I'm saying? And I had positive experiences and negative experiences identified to parents seven key times I've been involved I have been at the been the victim of racial violence traveling up and down be it through dance and sports particularly I've been two things but my experiences I never let them stop me no matter if they cause flashbacks because I got violently uh, tortured from young, but also by knife point, I got tortured also. 
but it gave me the positive mental attitude to deal with my situation. I had flashbacks from a long time ago. I had flashbacks. I never told an individual about it. Now I'm talking to individuals because I tell parents, if your child's had a trauma, you have to deal with it. It's gonna, it's gonna end up with them in adulthood. Because the joke was, and it's not a joke. I didn't know I was dyslexic to 41. Dyslexics have what was called fast picture thinking. Trauma was worsened by the fact I was dyslexic because I was getting these fast images of a negative experience and it was disabilitated, it overwhelmed me. Do you understand? I didn't know what it was. Now I understand what it was, I can better cope with it. I created coping mechanisms which was I was involved in, I used to do a lot of art, arts and crafts. And I do arts and crafts just to relax me. As a dancer between shows, what I do, I don't do physical activity. I watch martial arts because it relaxes me. I watch a lot of movement. I like watching ice skating, roller skating. I learn the history of movement to improve my coaching and mentoring. I was like Bruce Lee, but I got focused more into what Bruce was doing. Jit Kwon Do, mixing styles, because I was doing it. And you need a guider. So in the 70s, a lot of people looked to Bruce Lee. Ah, oh, see what he's doing. Boom, boom, boom. Then in the 80s, what happened was, 83, I read a book by, called Black Dance by a woman called Lynn Imre. In that book, I read about Master Juba. And I realized that I was dancing in the spirit of Juba's learning, thinking, and development. And that his learning and development was entrenched in the black community and the white community. So modern dance, creative dance, Master Juba's learning, training, and development is in that. Modern dance could have never came without Master Juba learning, thinking, and development and his hands on training. I started to do research about Juba more than the dancer, the thinker. The interdisciplinary artist, I came an interdisciplinary artist from young because I was always dancing and dance has complementary activities around it. And I was involved in it just naturally. So, for example, you have dance. I was involved in music. I was involved in drama. Both of them used to be in studying. I was involved in arts and crafts. I was involved in costume. I was involved in history. So when you put dance in the middle, blue UK jazz dance in the middle, I'm one of the most interdisciplinary artists there's ever been, directly connecting them to dance. Other people disconnect their other activities. I do not identify what shaped my learning and thinking was me involved in sports, involved in complementary activities, most importantly, involved in an active lifestyle. Blue UK Jazz Dance comes from an active lifestyle of lifelong learning. And that lifelong learning has a plan. I have continuous planning, planning development, I have a continuous personal development, continuous professional development, all around UK Jazz Dance. So what's happening is, when you get older, you change, your, your, you have, you've had a plan created. So I know one day, one day, Blue can't walk. <coughs> Blue want him to run. I already put into place a practice, a plan. That one day I'm just going to be talking about dance appreciation. One day I'm going to talk about the generic leadership, which I was already doing from the 80s. All the health, dance and health practice now, drumming and health practice. I was doing that from the 80s people within black organizations. We had what was called anti racist education. So I was using the dance as for non to create uh, opportunities to explore. Issues in an unthreatening way was being done as a community artist before community arts hit universities, blacks, African diaspora people already doing that in the community. So, for example, carnival came into schools. What was carnival there for? Was to improve race relations in this country. It was for you to explore the history of carnival because carnival is an important history. Why? Because it stems back to Africa. It then shows you its process from into slavery and then post-slavery how it was used. 
you have to know what how Claudia Jones, the woman who brought, who initiated the carnival in 1958, why she initiated Claudia Jones was to improve race relationships after people were killed in the riots of Nottingham. That's the same with UK jazz dance people. Why did UK jazz dance come about? Parents, you won't know. And that's where I come in to give you the most comprehensive education that you want to know in UK jazz dance. And now, parents, educators, what's most importantly for me was to make sure that you had documentation. Blue notes. Most important for you to have visuals of me. Because only when you can see that, that you can know I have excellence. You know I have respect, I have integrity. Yeah, I show service to my community. And it's important I show you that. Because I want young people to engage in UK jazz dance from a perspective of dance education. And that I want them to have respect for themselves, respect for others. I want them to show integrity to the culture and show integrity to blue UK jazz dancing. It's a culture heritage dance. Don't see it as just, oh, I just picked up this dance. Because how people speak to me sometimes is that, oh, it's just this fad dance. Because Anglo-Saxons have taught them that. And then what's happened is, unfortunately, some of my own people have digested that it's insignificant. And the reason that they've done that is because they've had culture assimilation education. Have you got that? It's not about judging anybody. Some Anglo-Saxons present us in a negative way because two things mainly, cultural bias and implicit bias. So I talk about that immediately. And Snowboy's book shows cultural bias and shows implicit bias. And I say that straight up because he's, uh, he's older than me. Yeah, I'm saying he's an individual has responsibility. I cannot be a dance educator, walk and talk in a way that's going to harm people, that impairs their health. Snowboy's book impairs the health of African diaspora people and wider cultures because they'll come to think, oh, this dance is nothing. These guys destroyed the scene. Boom. But the reality is not that. Go and look at UK jazz dance in Japan. Go and look at UK jazz dance in Korea. Go and look at UK jazz dance in the UK. Go and look at UK jazz in Europe. It's one of the most dominant youth arts cultures before hip hop. Not been identified. That has enabled people to shape their personalities and characters and their lives in a positive way. It brought an active youth lifestyle for them. And why it's involved, people involved in it because it had so many bows to it that are fantastic clothes, fashion, grooming, recycling records, recycling clothes, competition, providing a positive healthy image identity concept of yourself in the dance world. Look at the dancers in Japan. What is it presented for them? It gives them a cool aesthetics. That's the most important thing. And cool aesthetics is something that's embedded, is embedded into their life. It connects you back to jazz, UK jazz dance, but it's different. It's unique. It's distinctive. And many dancers like myself, I'm a pioneer who's come back to reclaim and restore my own legacy of achievement, benefits, conscious development. I'm the first person to talk about real talk. There's been a lot of glamorization. And that glamorization doesn't help anybody. Race relations is the key, one of the key activities in development. Okay, one of the key things that you learn through learning Blue UK Jazz Dance. Because I give you, from 1975 to 2015, I've been involved in this art form. And I can tell you a lot about race relations. And we're in a sad condition. All over the world, racism has risen again. After all the activities we put into place. African diaspora people, after all the activities we put into place. Racism has risen again in 2015. Why? Because of economics. Is one of the key reasons. Because racism is built on economics. It's not separated to it. There has to be a group at the bottom. And they're the group who do the menial work. Full stop. Snowboy's written a book. To make money from that book. To be in the commercial industries. In lectures in Japan. Talking. 
in some of the launches in Japan. He's identified information that's incorrect. He's identified our dance styles came from funk. They never came from funk. Because what came before funk? Every African diaspora brother and sister walks on the steps of their ancestors in their body's DNA. That's right. That's why you see retentions of our African spirit. So that's why the circle is still here. That's why Capoeira is here unknown to the dancers. They were reflecting their warrior spirit that's been hybrided throughout many, many, many years. You get me? Anyway, on that, Blue UK Jazz Dance. As I said, it's one of the legacy map basically. Let me repeat that again. Was in the blue lab. No, you can relax. It's dedicated 110% to my legacy. Why? Because I was written out the definitive book, people. On UK Jazz Dance, I'm unsung. You don't know me. So my work was to reclaim and restore it in a bigger, bolder and better way. I identified in one of my previous talks, one of the things that Britain has spread to one-sixth of the world is self-deprecation. People in Britain have low have self-deprecation. And I identified in a talk. On Facebook, I present information about me. I'm the only person doing it. I'd be dead to you, and UK Jazz Dance in Britain would be dead to individuals. I'm the first person that ever brought the lifestyle, ever, in such a comprehensive way from the Blue Lab. Nobody has ever done that. You don't know the background, the dancers, how we train, what we do. You don't know anything. I was the first individual. And because I'd done that on Facebook, it was disheartening to hear some individuals identified me as egotistical. I didn't take it on because I identified to you. Go and look up what it takes to be a professional dancer. You have to be single-minded. I'm a pioneer. Not only a dancer, I'm a dance pioneer. You have to be very much single-minded. That development I developed from being in the Blue Lab, I developed that development comes from doing sports that are about developing yourself. Boxing, when you go into that ring, it's you and your opponent. When you're in athletics, it's 100 metres, 200 metres, 400 metres, whatever. It's you against the gun and the comp opponents that you have there. And you have to have a positive mental attitude. Why? Because people are going to try to reduce your positive mental attitude. Like people have done, tried to do to me. Got on Facebook, I put some on YouTube, people coming to me, you're egotistical, boom, boom, some. And that's how some people treat me. I never took it on for a second. I just increased how much I put on the web. Because at least I knew, oh, you're observing what I wanted to, you to observe. And that's what I wanted. Because there was never information, proper information about dance education yet. It was commercial. People didn't identify other dancers. I'm the one who started to identify other dancers. I said to people, this is what the JDs are doing. No one was doing that. It was all about <laughs> themselves because they're in a commercial, commercial minded way. I cannot stop that. But I can talk about commercial versus dance education i have a different commercial focus i'm like urban voices i'm like the dance fear of harlem dance fear of harlem came with a commercial focus but it was always about promoting the positive development of black dance do you get what i'm saying so identified to people shinder's list malcolm x films they're all commercially focused but what are they about they're about essentially educating you Make raising your awareness about this so there is commercial focus which provides a positive educational perspective and that's what I do and I did that through creating a play and I did part of that play called Rebirth for the Cut, uh, Tribute to John Bubbles but that's a bigger piece coming in the future 2016 it's going to be Rebirth for the Cut Volume 1 it's about my whole legacy of achievement, benefits, contribution, what I've gone through. About legacy is about the lessons. People forget that. So that's all I was presenting on the web to people. My lifestyle. And I said it. This is my lifestyle. Every day I woke up, I had two life-threatening illnesses. Getting on YouTube was a way that enabled me to keep myself alive. Enabled me to share with individuals what I was going through. I've talked about a hundred times about me going through illness. Blue UK Jazz Dance. Take it easy.